Many who are awake will agree that these are the very last days, or the return of our Messiah is even at the doors. However, many still have no idea what to expect. Today, we will dissect a message God has for you through the prophet Ezekiel. Long ago, the prophet Ezekiel was instructed to speak directly to the land of Israel and prophesy concerning what was to come in the last days. Little did we know that Ezekiel saw this very time right now and has detailed words of instruction concerning what we are waiting to see unfold very soon so that we're not caught unawares as those that continue to sleep despite all the reason to awaken to the truth and to cast off the works of darkness and obey the way, the truth, and the life. We begin our journey in Ezekiel 36. And you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, because the enemy said of you, Aha, and the ancient heights have become our possession. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, precisely because they made you desolate and crushed you from all sides so that you became the possession of the rest of the nations and you became the talk and evil gossip of the people. As we just read above, it is clear that the land of Israel will be in the hands of the enemy until our Heavenly Father acts. We have been taught that the 1948 creation of the State of Israel is the fulfillment of the regathering that is spoken of by the Most High, Yahuwah. This is an end times event marker and what we as believers in Yahusha, Jesus Christ, is waiting for. Here are a few examples of that prophecy. Jeremiah 32, 37 through 40. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries, whether I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Jeremiah 16, 14 through 15. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Isaiah 66, 7 through 8. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Many scholars will say that this 1948 political state of Israel is the fulfillment of these and many other connecting verses. However, the ten lost tribes of Israel have not been regathered yet, as this is a requirement of this fulfillment, as described in Ezekiel 37, as well as it is said that they will dwell safely in the land of Israel forever. Ezekiel 37 The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, 
They say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Most of us have no idea, but this is the same event Paul was describing in 1 Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, Yeshua, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Brothers and sisters, it's very evident that these things have not happened yet. So, what is the state of Israel doing there, and what's its purpose? Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains and the hills and the ravines and the valleys, the desolate wastes and the deserted cities, which have become a prey and derision to the rest of the nations all around. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely I have spoken in my hot jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all Edom, who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and utter contempt that they might make its pasture lands a prey. Many of us know by now that there is a group of families that literally own everything materialized, and it is their plan to turn the populations into fearful, helpless slaves. The Illuminati, the fake Jews, Satanists, the so-called elites, or whatever you want to call them, have taken over nearly every government this plan has been in motion for a long time, some would even say thousands of years. In 1920, the League of Nations was formed as a precursor to the United Nations, whose beginning was officially October 24, 1945. The official reasoning for establishing these groups are stated as, the League of Nations was an international organization founded after the Paris Peace Conference in 1919. 
the League's goals included disarmament, preventing war through collective security, settling disputes between countries through negotiation, diplomacy, and improving global welfare. By the scriptures, we know that when the world comes together as one, this is not a good thing. All one must do is research the last time this happened, the Tower of Babel. Its goal was to attempt to rule the world and overthrow God. Thousands of years later, has anything changed? Not a chance. I could go on in detail about how the UN created this political state of Israel and the lies and deceit that went into creating the emotional response from the world in order to back this. But that would honestly take a whole other video to explain. What is interesting is who this was done for. The Rothschild family, who many believe are. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Here is a copy of the official letter. Remember what we just read. Who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and utter contempt that they might make its pasture lands a prey. Casting God's sacred land for a prey to fulfill their desires is their whole plan. In 1871, Albert Pike, a 33rd degree and leader of the Freemasons wrote a letter mapping out the three world wars to create agendas and chaos in order to pave the road to gain worldwide control and a one world government. The first world war must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agent tour the agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to format this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must be strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which will be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. So far, the first and second have gone according to plan. And keep in mind, brothers and sisters, Revelation 17, 17, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So not to worry, brothers and sisters, this is all part of Yahuwah's grand plan. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agent tour of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, and spiritual and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and the most bloody turmoil. Then, everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, 
brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and utter contempt that they might make its pasture lands a prey. In short, Israel is the bait and the prey, just as Ezekiel prophesied it would happen. Essentially, they made the 1948 state of Israel just to use it to start World War III with its coming destruction. So I ask, what would a believer think if not too long from now, the state of Israel was destroyed and laid waste? Since most teach this is the fulfillment of God, what would happen to the faith of many? Questions would arise. Doubts in the legitimacy of scriptures will become rampant, just as the enemy wants it to be. Their plan is to convert the multitude disillusioned with Christianity. Should we really be all that surprised that we are going to witness this event? After all, our Messiah told us what happened in the end times. And when ye shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Many are unaware, but this destruction of Jerusalem and the land of Israel is the righteous judgment of the Most High, Yahuwah. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Receive double. Haven't we heard this before in Revelation? And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled to her double yes brothers and sisters jerusalem is mystery babylon before you get upset and click off this video because you know the usa or rome or the vatican is babylon keep in mind this harlot has many daughters how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow the opposite is true thus says the lord god i brought this people out of bondage and gave them commandments through my servants the prophets but they would not listen to them and made my counsels void the mother who bore them says to them go my children because i am a widow and forsaken I brought you up with gladness, but with mourning and sorrow I have lost you, because you have sinned before the Lord God and have done what is evil in my sight. But now, what can I do for you? For I am a widow and forsaken. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And in her was found the blood of the prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would gather thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Mystery Babylon, the great city. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. It is evident that our Messiah was crucified in Jerusalem. So yes, we will see the destruction of Israel, Jerusalem, before we see the day we are waiting for. The body of Christ is completely oblivious to all of this. Almost all of us have been taught that the Jews living in Israel are God's people and he will rapture the church and then go on to deal with those Jews. This is farthest from the truth. Keep in mind that it was prophesied long ago by Moses that whoever does not believe in Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, the promised one, the beloved, the only begotten son of God, Yahuwah, will be cut off from his people and no longer be his people. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So who is end times Israel? Well, in short, you, who believe in the promised Messiah. You have been grafted into the house of Israel. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in past times Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, Yahushua, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Made nigh unto what? The house of Israel. Now therefore, Ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Galatians 3 For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, Yahusha. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Remember the Ezekiel 37 prophecy about the two sticks we heard earlier? Say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. It was prophesied even way before this as to why the stick is in the hand of Ephraim. Before Jacob, Israel's death, he blessed the two children of Joseph, which would begin this chain of events. 
In Genesis 48, we see Jacob, Israel, blessing the two sons of Joseph before he dies. Something interesting happens. When Joseph tried to put the correct hand on the elder son, Manasseh, to receive the elder's blessing, and his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Multitude of nations is also translated and is the same as the fullness of the Gentiles. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith, so do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness, otherwise you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and grafted contrary to nature, and to a cultivated olive tree. How much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. So what does this all mean? Again, you have been grafted into the house of Israel and the rest of Ezekiel 36 applies to you who remain in faith and obedience to Yahuwah through his son, Yahusha. Now, let's go through the rest of Ezekiel 36 and see what is to come for us after we see this destruction of the land of Israel. But you, O mountains of Israel, shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people, Israel, for they will soon come home. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn to you, and you shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply people on you, the whole house of Israel, all of it. The cities shall be inhabited, and the waste places rebuilt, and I will multiply on you man and beast, and they shall multiply and be fruitful, and I will cause you to be inhabited as in your former times, and will do more good to you than ever before. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I will let people walk on you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess you, and you shall be their inheritance, and you shall no longer bereave them of children. Thus says the Lord God, because they say to you, you devour people, and you bereave your nation of children. Therefore, you shall no longer devour people and no longer bereave your nation of children, declares the Lord God. And I will not let you hear any more the reproach of the nations, and you shall no longer bear the disgrace of the peoples and no longer cause your nation to stumble, declares the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their ways before me were like the uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual impurity. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed in the land, for the idols which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their ways and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, and that the people said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. 
and I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all your uncleanness, and I will summon the grain, and make it abundant, and lay no famine upon you. I will make the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field abundant, that you may never again suffer the disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves for your iniquities and your abominations. It is not for your sake that I will act, declares the Lord God. Let that be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the waste places shall be rebuilt, and the land that was desolate shall be tilled, instead of being the desolation that it was in the sight of all who passed by. And they will say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you shall know that I am the Lord. I have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. Thus says the Lord God, This also I will let the house of Israel ask me to do for them to increase their people like a flock, like the flock for sacrifices, like the flock at Jerusalem during her appointed feasts. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord, Yahuwah. Beautiful words, and a day we should all be hoping for. Remember, this mortal life is but a vapor, and our real citizenship is within the walls of New Jerusalem. Yahuwah, our Father, told us how we are to act once we attain the new heart through belief. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God, Yahuwah. It's clear what he asks of us, and while none of us are perfect, including myself, we should be striving for obedience. Yahuwah, our Father, makes it also very clear about what happens to the disobedient. And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels, 
and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Who wants to be a part of the regathering only to have the door shut on them? Did Jesus, Yahusha, teach the same? Yes. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is lawlessness. Don't let any vain words or teachings of men tell you otherwise. Here's that same scene better explained. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold! The bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward, came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Lamps, oil, and light. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Jesus, Yahusha, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brothers and sisters, I pray this message found you well. And to know that if it is for our generation to see the destruction of Jerusalem and the land of Israel, to not be fearful, and to know that this is all according to to the Most High's plan. And if we do see this happen, to know that our regathering comes right after.